Spoiler alert! LeBron beats the 2021 Monstars. He makes up with his son. All is well. I mean, the movie ain't The Empire Strikes Back. Luke, no. No! What's good with it, people? Welcome to the Joe Blackula Perspective presents Behind the Curtain. And I am your host, the infamous Joe Blackula. Cue my drop. Joe Blackula. Good looking out. Disclaimer, I am Team Jordan all day. All about those 90s Chicago Bulls, them six championship rings, them Jordan threes, the fours, the fives, and the thirteens. That shot Jordan took over Craig Elo, uh, enough said. Now, Space Jam, a new legacy was released in theaters and on HBO Max on July 16th, 2021. Rated PG for cartoon violence and some filth, florin, filth language. I never said no filth, florin, filth. Total running time was one hour and 55 minutes. Produced by Ryan Coogler, Maverick Carter, and LeBron James. Directed by Malcolm D. Lee. Malcolm got some hits under his belt too. 1999's The Best Man, 2008's Welcome Home Roscoe Jenkins, and 2017's Girl Trip, or the Black Sisters version of The Hangover. Sidebar, to this day, to the time of this recording, I still have not finished watching Girl's Trip. That's because I think I get the gist of it. Space Jam, A New Legacy star Don Cheadle and of course LeBron James and on the up and up this movie is Don Cheadle's as much as it is LeBron's because Don is damn near featured in the entire movie and I was glad to see Don's big movie budget flex still going on because he's been in some billion dollar movies black actors Space Jam not Space Jam 1 but Space Jam was originally released in theaters on November 15th 1996 I had just turned 23 years old six Six days before the fact. Wow, I'm just not realizing. Look at that. Six days before the fact, I turned 23. Number 23. And the one thing that I'm sure that I was not doing on Friday, November 15th, was sitting in the movie theater watching Space Jam. Didn't want to see it. Was not interested. I mean, I saw it eventually on HBO. I do remember that. But no, didn't care. I'm not going to say that I liked it. I'm not going to say that I didn't. I will say that I found it entertaining at the time. This plot was pretty simple and direct. Didn't stray too far from the form. LeBron stars is who he is. He's having this tug of war with his son. His son is at that age where he's starting to brace up against his dad. As my mother used to say, starting to smell himself. What does that mean? What did that mean? What were we smelling? What were we supposed to have been smelling at that age? I'm just saying. But he's having this tug of war coming of age thing with his son, Dominic James. They call him Dom. Played by Cedric Joe. What up, Joe? I could not not do that. Don Cheeto plays this artificial intelligence character named Al Gore Rhythm who gets mad at LeBron for rejecting an offer that he, Al, had created for LeBron. To put LeBron in all of these Warner Brothers movies that's supposed to take Warner Brothers to the next level or at least back to where they've been. So Al feels rejected that LeBron threw him a curve, cuffs LeBron's son, Dom. He tells LeBron that the only way that he can get his son back, seeing that LeBron said that all he wants to do is focus on playing basketball, then of course he's gonna have to put together a hoop squad to play against Al's team that he hasn't put together yet. If LeBron wins, he gets his son back. If LeBron loses, then everybody that's in attendance at the game is going to be trapped in the Warner Brothers server verse that they're in, and that all of the tunes that are playing on LeBron's squad are going to be deleted. Sidebar, I actually just thought about this. That actually has a whole Who Frame Roger Rabbit type of vibe to it with the dip. I actually just thought about that. So at this point, LeBron has to recruit his usual suspect team of tunes that's been scattered across the universe. Same similar faces, you know all of them. It's just this time around, they've been upgraded and rendered to this 3D perspective, pun intended. And at the same time, Don Cheadle gets him a 2021 Monstar squad of a few WNBA and NBA players. I really don't feel like saying who they were. Now, this movie to me was a two hour promo for Warner Brothers, a marketing pitch commercial for Nike. The Nike swoosh was everywhere. An exhibition for capitalism and a living memorial for LeBron James flat out. The opening sequence, I mean, if my mans was to drop dead tomorrow, God willing that does not happen. They could just roll the intro credits from this movie as his eulogy. Seriously. And I don't know what Warner Brothers angle was, but it seemed to me like their intention was to 
cram every property that they're in possession of over the last 100 years in this movie. The Wizard of Oz, Casablanca, The Matrix, Harry Potter, Superman, Wonder Woman, let's just say the whole entire DC universe, the Hanna-Barbera properties, Flintstones, Jetsons, Rick and Morty. It's Nike logos on all of the jerseys. So there's a scene when LeBron first arrived on the Tomb Planet. His body is falling through the sky and he lands on the ground and his body makes this crater. The crater was a giant Nike logo. Man, Ernie Johnson shows up. Why? Because Ernie works for TNT and TNT is a Warner Brothers property. It's almost to me like this movie was a flex to Disney and it was Warner Brothers way of telling them to bring it. We ain't got Star Wars. We ain't got Marvel. But we own everything that y'all don't. And we got a stale batch of Looney Tunes on deck. Do yourself a solid one day and during the actual basketball game and see how many Easter egg characters that Warner Brothers owns that you can actually pick out in the crowd. As well as pay attention to how they just try to sneak a lot of the characters past you. I saw the Adam West Batman in the front row booing. I saw some of the Johnny Quest characters and other throwbacks from my childhood out there. I can guarantee you McGilla Gorilla, Adam Ant, Secret Squirrel, they probably out there too. See who you can find. Two scenes in particular that I specifically thought was dope. One was earlier in the movie when Don Cheadle's character made the timeless Birdman comment, put some respect on my name. Put some respect on my name. Y'all understand me? When y'all saying my name, put some respect on it. Nigga, when my name come up, respect it. Let's go. Stop playing with my fucking name. I'll drill y'all. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say it no more. Hopefully Brian Baby Williams gets a residual check and use that bread to pay one of those former cash money hundred ass that's out there hurting for a payment old. The second scene was when Granny scores this basket during this scrimmage game and she said winner blouses. Anybody that I have to explain where that came from really fam. Game. Blouses. <laughs> Sidebar, the actor Bank who plays Black Jesus on the Cartoon Network Aaron Magruder series Black Jesus. Bank makes a cameo as a security guard. Once again, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network. Also, Chicago's own Lil Rel is a shotgun commentator next to Ernie Johnson during the game. Another Chicagoan, Wood Harris, makes a cameo as a coach. Actress Zendaya, is that how you pronounce her name? I know her now as Mary Jane or MJ in the Tom Holland Spider-Man universe. She plays the voice of Lola Bunny and comedian Gabriel Iglesias plays the voice of Speedy Gonzalez. Riddle me this. I would have thought that in this sensitive ass climate that we're living in these days that a clearly racial character like Speedy Gonzalez would have smooth been cut out of here by this time around. Wonder why they kept him. Wonder when I'm gonna hear something. Wonder if I'm gonna hear something. But makes me wonder if they would have gotten rid of a character like I don't know. Cooney the Raccoon? I don't know. Fail to mention. Space Jam A New Legacy also features a soundtrack of songs that I actually heard while I was watching the movie. The lineup looks pretty current, full of folk that I'm not going to listen to, but Wayne is on there, Chicago's on, Grand Crossing's on, Chance the Rapper is on there. Other than that, I don't care. And I don't care. In conclusion, I mean the movie is what it is, it's LeBron chasing the legend of Jordan and Space Jam just so happens to be part of that thread. But regardless, it was a good movie, something that you can watch with your family and not be weirded out by any filth flooring filth language. I never said no filth flooring filth. No nudity, no violence, well the cartoon violence, heavy on the special effects and a good rehashed storyline that actually worked the first time around back in 1996. And just like Jordan in 96, LeBron's acting was super suspect. I mean, it got rough in some of the scenes. The only time to me when his acting was normalized was when they made him an animated character for about 29 minutes of the movie. But LeBron knows that he ain't no actor. Although I really did like him in the movie Trainwreck. He pulled an Eminem in 8 Mile moment in a scene earlier in the movie and actually called out his lack of acting skills in the movie. That's what makes this movie to me, to me, that much more better than Space Jam 96. Better than 
Jordan's character? Because clearly LeBron had enough knowledge to know that his acting or lack of was going to need some support and that he was going to need some stellar actors to actually lean on to get him through this process. And if you're going to get some support, then you might as well get some support from the best acting available, mainly Don Cheadle. But at the same time, the rest of the actors, like the actors that played his family, the remaining supporting cast, they did a great job for giving LeBron the support crutch to lean on for this movie. Love, hate, or debate? I had to take a step back and look at it and actually marinate on this one. And I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, I loved it. But it's a complicated love, though. I hated the fact that no matter how close to the tunes that the voice actors were supposed to have been playing, they were never able to knock them out the park like the original voice actor Mel Blanc. Or Mel Blanc. I've never known how to pronounce his name. I grew up on Mel who did all of the original Looney Tunes voices as well as a lot of the Hanna-Barbera tunes too. The Bugs Bunny, that just wasn't it, man. Daffy? Yeah. And I loved it for the things that might not have been that obvious. Your third eye had to be really in focus, you dig? I love the fact that Don Cheadle's character, if you really listen to what he was saying, he's warning you about the seductions of algorithms, the seduction of analytics, the snare traps of social media if you want to go deeper. And in a sense, he even said that algorithms are trapped at you at all times in everything. He said it. If it has a mic, I will hear you. If it has a camera, I will see you. And it ain't nothing you can do about it. I love the fact that corporate media let that info get out there. And ain't none of y'all more than likely gonna peep the warning that Skynet is real. Message! And I'm gonna give this movie three and a half black fists out of five. <laughs> All right, people, let's put a bow on this one because it is officially a wrap. Please like, please share, please subscribe. Man, click the bell thing. You see what I put down there about text 10 people to text 10 people? I'm saying, could you do that? And whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below. Let a brother know, and I will holler black in a few ticks. In a minute, people. Man, I ain't really drink a lot of water doing this.